Normal people are broke, but everywhere you look, nice houses, nice cars, the appearance of wealth. But if you could pull back the curtain, if you could see their true financial position, for most of them, what you would find would surprise you. Very few people will generate wealth in their lifetime. Yet, Americans have gotten great at pretending to be wealthy. What's up, everyone? My name is Brian. Welcome to my channel and to one of my income streams, my grocery store. Being rich is not the norm. It is the outlier and wealth creation is complicated, but there is a general order to the process that will help increase your chances. I've organized wealth creation into four phases for you. Most people don't have the discipline to see these four phases through to completion, but with discipline, financial freedom and wealth accumulation are possible, even if you're making minimum wage right now. All right, let's get to those phases. Phase one, financial stability and education. You cannot grow wealth without first finding financial stability. So you'll need to lay the groundwork for a strong financial foundation through education. I know, that's why you're here. Okay, this is the tough love part of the video. If you aren't already financially stable, why not? First, you'll need to determine if you have an income problem or a lifestyle problem. An income problem means you aren't bringing in enough cash to cover the basic necessities. A lifestyle problem means you have the income but you're misappropriating those funds. In other words, you're spending money on crap you don't need. A lot of people like to make excuses for their financial problems. Now hear me, I know that some people have legitimate situations in life that hold them back, and I'm not trying to diminish them. But for the majority of us, there is no legitimate excuse. This is the phase where you have to accept that your financial situation is on you. No one is responsible for you and your situation. No one owes you anything. Not your employer, not the government, and not your significant other. No one owes you a thing. If you are in a position that isn't ideal for you, it's up to you to recognize it and fix it. If your employer isn't paying you what your position is worth, then get out there and find one that will or start your own. Guys, this might sound harsh, but you cannot accomplish big things in life if you have a victim mentality. You are capable of so much more than you even know. Take charge of your life and make it happen. If you're not capable of managing small amounts of income, you will certainly not be good at managing large amounts. Get money educated and put that education into practice. Most everyone that comes into a large sum of money before they've had a proper financial education will lose it just as quickly as they found it. Just look at lottery winners and professional athletes. It simply doesn't do anyone any good to increase their income if they haven't learned how to manage what they already have. The next three phases are important to building wealth. But if you're comfortable after phase one, there is nothing at all wrong with simply managing what you have and living your life. Once your lifestyle is in line and you're not living paycheck to paycheck anymore, it's time to increase your income. Phase two, income generation and diversification. There are two types of income working and passive. Working is income that you receive in exchange for your time. If you're paid hourly or salary for showing up to work and your income is dependent on you showing up for work, then you're paid a working income. A lot of small business owners, including myself, earn a working income. I own this grocery store where I shoot most of my videos. I still need to be here for this store to operate. That's a working income not a passive income. Now, if I were to train a manager to handle every single aspect of this store's operation, then my income could be converted from working to passive, and that's on the horizon for me. Passive income is income that's earned from either very little work or from front-end loaded work. For example, if you wrote a book and it continued to sell for the rest of your life, your work on that book was front-loaded during the writing phase, but you would be receiving an ongoing income for either no are very little additional work. Research has shown that successful wealthy people have on average seven income streams, but most Americans only have one. And in this phase, our focus is on increasing your income. And that will more than likely require you to get a second stream of income. Don't worry about getting to seven right off the bat. That will come in a later phase. For now, just focus on one additional source of income and it can be working or passive. The ultimate goal is for every source to be passive. But in the beginning, you just need another source to get the ball rolling of any kind. That means you may be working 60 or 70 hours a week for a while, but success has a price that must be paid and now is your time to pay it. Now, once you've found a good second source of income, 
it's time to move on to phase three, accumulation. Now, once you've made it through phase one and two, you'll find yourself in a much better financial situation than you're used to being in. So the name of the game in this phase is self-control and discipline, because our goal in this phase is to accumulate cash. And we all know how hard it is to control ourselves when we have extra cash laying around. Have you ever heard the term lifestyle inflation or lifestyle creep? That is where normal people increase their lifestyle to match their new income. You want to be wealthy? You cannot be normal. Do not fall prey to lifestyle inflation. Just because you have the free income and you could make the payments on the new truck does not mean that you can afford it yet. And just because you have $10,000 cash sitting in your checking account, it does not mean that you need to go out for dinner and drinks every night with your friends. Remember the lessons that you learned in phases one and two. Keep your expenses low for now. You have a goal and every penny that you spend will set you back on those goals. Keep your spending in check and build your cash on hand. Once you've accumulated six months worth of living expenses, in cash, it's time to move on to phase four, deployment of the troops. Look at your dollars as soldiers. You're going to send them out into the world and their sole mission is to capture other dollars and bring them back to you. More simply put, it's time to invest. So let's start with low hanging fruit. Talk to your employer, see what retirement options may be available to you. If they offer a 401k with any kind of employer match, participate fully. Any money they match is free money and free money is good money. Do not leave it on the table. And I know a 401k is not sexy. It isn't gonna make you rich overnight, but it is the easiest, least risky, most beneficial way to get started investing. I'm not an investment professional. I'm just some random dude on the internet sharing my ideas on money. Don't listen to random dudes on the internet. This is not investing advice, it's just entertainment. Phase four will last the bulk of your life. Your goal in this phase is to create as many passive income streams as you're comfortable with. This is the phase where you get to unleash that inner entrepreneur and let it do its thing. While balancing risk and protecting the income that you've already earned. If you've ever had the desire to get involved in real estate, now may be the time. So a side story about my real estate journey and how I got started with very little cash. My first investment property was a fixer upper that I lived in while I renovated it. Okay, so renovated might be a bit of a stretch. I cleaned, painted, laid some flooring, did a little landscaping, and that's about it. We paid about $42,000 for it, but don't get too hung up on the price because that was 20 years ago in rural Louisiana. Your numbers are probably gonna look a little different than mine, but we used a USDA rural development loan that only required something like 3% down. And that came out to like 1,300-ish dollars. And then we slowly cleaned and fixed up the house over the course of a few years. When we finished the house, we sold it for $88,000 giving us a net of somewhere around 25,000 after you figure in our expenses for fixing it up. Then we use that money to purchase another home. We repeated the same process three times over the next 10 years until we were finally able to use the equity in that last property to purchase a duplex with no money down. Now the lesson here is to be patient. It didn't happen for us overnight. We definitely had to put in our sweat equity to get that first property. But doing it this way allowed us to get into our first investment property with really no money out of pocket. Now, real estate isn't for everyone and it comes with plenty of risk. But if you're handy and you know your local real estate market, it might be right for you. But if real estate isn't your jam, that's totally okay. There are plenty of other ways to invest your money. Now, the safest way to invest your money would be to find an investment professional in your area that operates under fiduciary standards. Make sure to ask if they operate under fiduciary standards or suitability standards. Fiduciary standards means they are obligated by law to act in your best interest over their own, meaning they are obligated to put you in the best investment vehicles for you, even if it isn't the vehicle that pays them the best commissions. Suitability standards just means that the investment vehicle they choose has to be suitable for you. So there could be one vehicle that's better for you, but one that's better for them, but still suitable for you, and it's totally okay if they put you in the one that's best for them find someone that operates under fiduciary standards. Now, don't get in a hurry. Like I said earlier, this phase could last the rest of your life. Just take your time and deploy your cash wisely. One day, if you play your cards right, you'll wake up and realize your net worth is high enough and you have enough passive income 
that money is no longer a priority for you. Now, once that happens to you, it's time to do whatever you wanna do. Guys, money is a great tool and it can afford you many perks in life. Travel, a nice home, freedom, the pleasure of being in a position to help others. But hear me, money is not everything. It will make your life easier in some ways, but more complicated in others. Once your basic necessities are covered, it really doesn't increase your happiness that much. In fact, it will really only amplify the person that you are. And if you have problems in life, there's a good chance that money would only make them worse. This adventure of life, it'll be over sooner than any of us expect. And while money is important, there are things that are way more important. Don't let those things slip by while you're trying to build wealth. Enjoy where you are and who you're with now because you never know when your time is up and this whole life thing will come to an unexpected end.